So DMT is known as a spirit molecule, and with good reason. It's one of the most powerful psychedelics on the planet. Um, it works similarly to the other classic psychedelics like LSD and psilocybin, where it actually binds to serotonin receptors. And the serotonin receptors like uh, 5H2TA uh, are found in regions of your brain which are involved with higher cognitive processes like emotion, self-modeling, etc. cetera. Uh, so it's no surprise that uh, this is how it works. Since we are transhumanists and therefore know about this idea of mind configuration space and are not naive realists, so we don't believe that uh, what we perceive is directly reality, but it is merely a prediction um, a simulation which tr attempts to predict reality uh, to the extent that it's even useful to predict reality. Uh, we know this, right? We know that there are aspects of reality that we are not modeling, most of them, uh, because they had no evolutionary advantage. So there are billions of neutrinos going through our bodies. We're not modeling that because it's not useful. That would just waste um, our metabolism. That would waste energy. Uh, we only have a certain amount of anti-entropy or negentropy uh, to burn. So we're certainly not gonna waste it on uh, simulating neutrinos, right? So we know that as evolved creatures, we are just inhabiting this tiny little region called human space. This is human mind space, or human as Eliezer Yudkowsky might say, human. And then we have all the other animals. Like, what's it like to be a cetacean, right? What's it like to be a chimp? And perhaps we have all the other animals outside of this galaxy. Maybe we're the only animals in our galaxy, it seems, but maybe not. Um, all the other animals, all the aliens in our Hubble volume, or outside in other uh, regions. And then perhaps we might even have other regions that are intelligently designed uh, by the products of natural selection. So when humans design AIs that are conscious, that would be an even greater um, exploration of mind design space. So DMT, the experiences that you're gonna have in there are still just some region, right? As a human, if we define you as a closed individual um, with a limited lifespan, based on the length of that lifespan, you're gonna explore uh, different regions of this uh, to different extents than others. And depending on how boring your life is, how repetitive it is, uh, you're gonna explore uh, a more limited amount than others and so on. Uh, DMT is just some region of this. So with DMT, something that you very widely report is the feeling of being ripped outside of your body, right? You feel like you are this other thing besides your body that is ripped out of your body. Um, this is not a manifestation of ontological ground reality because you don't have a soul in the first place, which could be ripped out of your body, but it is merely um, a, a tweaking uh, of the inner movie because your body right now is inside of this inner movie. You are in some region of computational space here within human world that models its own body. So right now your toes, your hands, your feeling of being behind your eyes itself is just some shape. It's just some computations that are happening within a brain that are creating this inner movie. So you have this binding to these uh, receptors, very much like serotonin, um, and you completely change it. You completely change uh, the shape of what's going on. And so now you're feeling like you're being shot across space uh, because you, you have disturbed this system. But you're still within uh, the human. Uh, you, you still have an upper bound uh, to your experiences as human. Um, and we know this because what DMT, well, we know this because of, like, because that's what it is, uh, physically. 
but uh, an interesting thing is that with DMT, unlike psilocybin and unlike LSD, you have a huge amount of uh, homogeneity to your experiences. Like people share very similar experiences. So one of them is being ripped out of your body and shot across space. Another thing that is very, very common is the feeling of being in the presence of deities, being in the presence of gods around you being in the midst of gods and that is extremely interesting and that that is very human you know so no matter how much math or science you do uh dmt will reveal your humanity you will be launched into some room in which you will feel that you are in the presence of deities no matter uh how much of a secularist or whatever you think you are uh, you can't just excite your humanity this is really inbuilt and it makes sense, you know, as uh, social animals, uh, highly evolved social animals, we have entire modules dedicated to modeling alphas and, and projecting uh, our minds as alphas that are in control. We want uh, leaders, people in control of things, and it's no surprise that we, gods are a part of us. And, and Robin Hanson, actually, The Economist, wrote a blog post about this at one point. That uh, even in the future, once we start exploring these transhuman areas of mind, of mind space through actual reconfiguration of our brains, uh, through technology, we will still probably, um, or, or through uploading ourselves into computers and so on, um, We'll still probably have gods insofar as we are social creatures that are like humans. Uh, now, if we stray very far away, we might stop doing that. But um, it, this is a very interesting thing that DMT even taps into that. Like, out of all things that, that it could have, um, you know, th that binding to this receptor could have done, the fact that it does this, of all things, it means it's pretty deeply ingrained into us, uh, this aspect of human nature. So in the next video, I'm gonna explain more about what DMT is, how it works, and what it actually does.